Hi, everybody. I'm get a few things situated here. Wait a minute until 12 o'clock. I got on a minute early here, but get started in just a moment. I guess I can talk about my uh, card while we're waiting for a couple people to jump on here. Um, my intention card for today was renewal. Um, I haven't really thought too much about it. I guess, you know, one of the things I can relate to when I hear that word is all the different stages I've been through <clears throat> in my life and, you know, more importantly, during my sobriety, um, all the different renewal phases that I've gone through throughout this last year and a half, um, you know, and I'm in one right now. I think we all are in a way in a stage of renewal. You know, I think, I really think that we're going to come out of this time that isn't necessarily ideal with a lot of gratitude for things that we've, you know, taken for granted in our lives. So I, I choose to look at this stage that we're in right now in this quarantine isolation period, you know, the unknown and the fear as a stage of renewal, you know, um, we can we can definitely come out of this better than we went in, you know. Um, so just food for thought, renewal for the day. Um, but all right, so I'll get started here. We are reading from this book again today. Um, it's The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. Um, and I kind of looked through it a little bit today, and I decided to talk about um, a chapter that she calls Cultivating a Resilient Spirit. So the touch points that I'm going to hit on within this chapter, it's super long. I would never sit here and read it during this whole thing. But um, the touch points are uh, talking about resilience um, and what that looks like. And then also talking about hope and powerlessness that come along with that, too. And all of this is part of cultivating that resilient spirit um, and letting go of numbing and powerlessness. Um, so I'll start out with a quote that's right in the beginning of the chapter. Um, and it says, she could never go back and make some of the details pretty. All she could do was move forward and make the whole, make the whole beautiful. That's a quote from Terry St. Cloud. Um, and I really like that. You know, I highlighted it in the beginning here um, because, you know, that a lot of us get stuck in the thinking about the past and, you know, things that we've done in our lives and thinking that we are not good enough because of things that we've done you know, and what our past looks like. And, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. And that that's what I like to call a nice little wormhole that I can get sucked in and I can't get out of sometimes, you know, and all I can do is put one foot in front of the other and work toward living my life differently than I lived before. Um, you know, and I was kind of just touching on that when I was talking about renewal a minute ago. You know, we can't change what happened to lead up to this. You know, we can't change like the fact that it is happening, but we can put one foot in front of the other and learn and grow throughout this and come out with more hope, more resilience, you know, and, and stronger than what we went in as, um, you know, so. Okay. So hi, John, Kara, and Tegan. Um, we'll start with what makes up resilience. If you look at, the current research, here are five of the most common factors of resilient people. One, they are resourceful and have good problem solving skills. Two, they are more likely to seek help. Three, they hold the belief that they can do something that will help them to manage their feelings and to cope. Four, they believe or they have social support available to them. And five, they are connected with others such as family or friends. Of course, there are more factors depending on the researchers but these are the big ones. I think, you know, when I read this first this morning, I think that we all can relate to a lot of these five points that are here. They're resourceful and have good problem solving skills. No matter what our lives have looked like, when we're put in difficult situations, it's our baseline to figure out what we can do to survive throughout it, you know, and looking to resources that are available to us to get us through to the next phase, you know, or just maintain during that period of time. Um, they're more likely to seek help. You know, how many times in our lives have we reached out to people, our loved ones or support networks, you know, and reached out to people? I know I do 
frequently. Um, they, they hold the belief that they can do something that will help them manage their feelings, their feelings and to cope. You know, and this is something that, you know, maybe not always looks the best, but we always, I find, you know, in my experience that I always found a way to manage and cope. You know, and at one point that didn't look great, but I still was doing what I what I thought I knew how to do and coping throughout it. You know, so I was still resilient throughout that process. Um, they have social support available to them. You know, and in in the time that we're in right now, we're, I think we're all realizing how much social support we actually have. You know, we're not able to leave and go see these people in person, but we have all of these tools right in front of us and this huge network in the Rochester community and it's expanding, you know, further than we thought that it would, you know, and we, we have that social support right there, right at our fingertips. They're connected with others such as family or friends, you know, and again, touching on the same point, we're all staying connected throughout this, even though it, it's not ideal or it's not what we are used to. We're still pulling through and we'll, we're still showing up. You know, you guys are showing up watching these videos. Um, we're showing up and doing them. We're, you know, reaching out to people through, Zoom calls or text messages or FaceTime, you know, we're doing all of that. Um, so each one of us are resilient throughout this. And, and yes, it looks different for every person, but we all are meeting these criteria, I guess. Um, also throughout this, I will be talking a little bit, like she touches on a little bit of spirituality. So I wanted to give a brief like definition of what she describes spirituality as. Um, and she says, She says, by spirituality, I'm not talking about re religion or theology, but I'm talking about a shared, deep, shared and deeply held belief. Based on the interviews, here, here's how I define spirituality. Spirituality is recognizing and celebrating that we are all inextricably connected to each other by a power greater than all of us, and that our connection to that power and to one another is grounded in love and compassion. Practicing spirituality brings a sense of perspective, meaning, and purpose to our lives. So pretty much like what we're talking about here when we talk about spirituality is just connection, you know, to each other and knowing that, you know, whatever's working in our lives is more than us, you know, and that, that, that's our community. It's greater than we are. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that before I got into some more of this reading here. Um, and anybody has any comments or concerns about spirituality and stuff, we can talk about that too. Um, and then here she goes, you know, we talk about resilience and then we start to talk about a little bit more of the hope and powerlessness. And I like to touch on, I like to touch on hope because of the fact that we keep talking about this, this is a common theme in our videos that we've been doing lately is finding hope throughout all of this and giving each other hope and keeping us connected because the only way that we're going to get through this is together. You know, we're not, we're not able to do it alone most of the time. Like, you know, we end up in a very dark place, you know, so coming out of this, we come out of it together, you know, and as a society, the only way that we're ever going to get through it in general is together. Um, so I like to talk about, you know, hope. And like when I was flipping through this book here this morning, you know, going through the different topics that she talks about in the entire book, like those, those are the ones that stuck out to me. The ones that I talked about yesterday with compassion, you know, and, hope and cultivating a, res a resilient spirit and then gratitude and joy. You know, these are, these are things that kind of take our mind off the chaos that's happening out there and give us something to live with or live li something to live with intention through today with, you know, to actually have a goal through the day um, and start to give things back to people. Um, and that's, that's the hope that we're sharing. All right. So she goes on to talk about hope and powerlessness. Uh, as a researcher, I can't think of two words that are more misunderstood than the words hope and power. As soon as I realized that hope is an important piece of wholehearted living, I started investigating and found the work of C.R. Snyder, a former researcher at the University of Kansas, Lawrence. Like most people, I always thought of hope as an emotion, like a warm feeling of optimism and possibility. I was wrong. I was shocked to discover that hope is not an emotion. It's a way of thinking or a cognitive process. Emotions play a supporting role, but hope is really a thought process, ma process made up of what Snyder calls a trilogy of goals, pathways, and agency. In very simple terms, hope happens when, first, we have the ability to set realistic goals. I know where I want to go. 
Second, we are able to figure out how to achieve those goals, including the ability to stay flexible and develop alternative routes. I know how to get there, I am persistent, and I can tolerate disappointment and try again. And last, we believe in ourselves. I can do this. So hope is a combination of setting goals, having the tenacity and perseverance to pursue them, and believing in your own abilities. You know, and we're here, and we talk to you guys every day, you know, about hope and believing in each other. But at the same time, you know, the baseline to that is believing in yourself, you know, and we've touched on it in a plethora of different forms over these videos with self-compassion and self-care and self-love and positive affirmations. And uh, Yana touched on last night the way that our brain works, you know, with the shoulda, coulda, wouldas um, and stuff like that, you know. And all of that is a foundation to the hope. You know, it's not just that warm, fuzzy feeling I get when I watch a video and I get inspired. You know, it's the thought processes that are going on in my head that I can now manifest those feelings into reality. You know, I can now manifest them in a way that I'm starting to take those little practices that we talked about yesterday and taking the action into um, turning those thoughts into my reality. You know, I, like I said yesterday, just one little thing, if you catch yourself thinking I should have done this or I could have done that, taking that one, that one action into changing that word, you know, in your head to, you know, it's okay, I'm making progress in this in my life, or I am okay with taking a rest day today. Um, it's okay that I watch TV, I need a break. You know, just that one thought process is, is taking the action that, you know, is the foundation to our hope and to our, you know, progress in life and making those changes. Uh, she goes on to say, we develop a hopeful mindset when we understand that some worthy endeavors will be difficult and time consuming and not enjoyable at all. Hope also requires us to understand that just because the process of reaching a goal happens to be fun, fast, and easy, doesn't mean that it has any less value than a difficult goal. If we want to cultivate hopefulness, we have to be willing to be flexible and demonstrate perseverance. Not every goal will look and feel the same. Tolerance for disappointment, determination, and a belief in self are at the heart of hope. You know, I was talking, just, I was just touching on that a little bit. It's like, you know, it's the action behind it. Sorry, my cat's attacking my computer. Hold on. Hi, buddy. I mean, I know. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Um, he likes to play with it when I'm up here or get it, get behind here and get all the pens and stuff. So he's super helpful. Huh. Yep, and here he comes attacking me. Um, but, you know, there's there's a lot of action that goes into hope. A lot of us, you know, even taking the action of reading one of these books or getting on here and watching these videos, you know, or getting on and watching a workout in the morning or running with John in the morning, you know, things like that, taking that action, that's that's putting it that work into hope, you know, and being ready, you know, for the determination and the belief in yourself. Um, and also knowing that it's okay to not succeed sometimes, you know, there's times that we're going to fall short and there's times that you know, it's not going to look the way that we wanted it to look in the beginning, you know, and that's where the spirituality plays a piece in it. And we just have faith in the fact that everything that happened happened for some reason, whatever that might be, you know, I'm on this journey for a reason. Um, you know, a lot of us suffer with addiction and we have been in the grips of hell, you know, a few times and we've taken really, you know, diverted paths throughout life. But I, I'm a true believer that all of these things happen for a reason. You know, I'm here where I am today because of all those experiences. You know, and that's where my hope came from. You know, is it, I mean, it manifested because of the community and my supports pulling that out of me. But um, looking back on it, you know, and what gives me hope today is everything that I've been through and those disappointments and those downfalls, you know, have really built a foundation for me to know that it's okay and I'm on the right path regardless of what it looks like at that time. You know, um, it's like we're where we're at right now and today. It doesn't look the greatest. It's not the most comfortable. Um, but there's a reason, you know, and I, I think I choose, I choose to believe that the reason is, you know, gratitude and, you know, kind of getting back to a simpler lifestyle and connecting and, you know, growing that community and getting out of our comfort zones, you know. Um, so that gives me hope today, you know, and I hope that 
I hope that you guys can find some hope in that as well, you know, looking at it now and kind of just knowing that, that there's a reason for all this and that we are in it together and, you know, we're not alone in this, um, which, you know, takes me into kind of what I'm going to talk about next, which is just, just a touch on um, hopelessness and powerlessness, because, you know, sometimes for me, the way that I understand things is to know both aspects of it. So we're talking about hope and resilience and what you have control over in your life today. So it doesn't hurt to know what it looks like to be hopeless or what powerlessness looks like. You know, just have an understanding that this is where I don't want to be and this is where I want to be. Um, so like I said, these chapters are super long. There's a lot in them. So I pick out little things. So I'm sorry if it's like all over the place. Um, I kind of just pick out paragraphs here and there that kind of speak to me as I'm reading it or make sense in my brain, you know, so I'm not reading all of the little nitty gritty details in between it, but I highly recommend reading it. You know, it's, it's phenomenal. I've read it myself prior to this. Um, but so she talks about hopelessness and she says, hopelessness is dangerous because it leads to feelings of powerlessness. Like the word hope, we often think of power as negative. It's not. The best definition of power comes from Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. He described power as the ability to affect change. If we question our need for power, think about this. How do you feel when you believe that you are powerless to change something in your life? And then she goes on to powerlessness and she says, powerlessness is dangerous. For most of us, the inability to affect change is a desperate feeling. We need resilience and hope and a spirit, and a spirit that can carry us through the doubt and fear. We need to believe that we can affect change if we want to live in love with our whole hearts. Um, you know, and I just read that just to give a, just, just to give a reminder of like where hopelessness and powerlessness can take us, you know, and also when she says in here, um, the inability to affect change is a desperate feeling. We can get caught up in that, you know, um, in the, in, again, what we're dealing with now, we can feel like we don't have control over what's going on. When in reality, we do. We have control over those little things that we keep talking about, you know, how we treat ourselves today. Um, <laughs> choosing to believe that, you know, there's a greater plan to this, you know, choosing to believe that we're going to get through it and uh, in that we're not alone. You know, those are the things that we have control over today. So we're not powerless. You know, we are powerless over the outside circumstances. And I've talked about this in videos way before is that, you know, that hula hoop that we, we can put on. And we're powerless over everything outside of it, but we have power on, on what's inside of it, which is us, you know, and what, how our mindset is. Um, that's kind of where we're trying to head with this is like getting us in a mindset that gets us through it, you know, and gets us, gets us to the point that we're not, you know, isolating further than we already have to be, you know, or sitting in our self pity and our wallowing and stuff. And I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I can get caught up in that, you know, and, Knowing that I have control over these little things helps me to push through and to keep going, you know, and, um, you know, I hope that it, it helps you guys too. I really do. Ow. I don't, he's, he just woke up from a nap. So he's doing his best to play and be crazy right now. All right. So just like in the last video, every chapter, she talks about digging deep at the end and gives us some intentions and some, you know, goals to work towards in cultivating a resilient spirit. Um, so she talks about get dig deep again. And she says, get deliberate. A good friend of mine heard this wonderful intention setting reminder during a 12 step meeting. And I love it. It's called the vowel check. A E I O U and Y. So first is a, have I been abstinent today? However you define that. I find it a little more challenging when it comes to things like food, work, and the computer. So have you stayed abstinent from whatever it was that was, you know, uncomfortable, uncomfortable for you yesterday? Like for me, I spent too much time on the computer a couple days ago. So I stayed abstinent from my computer for like seven hours the next day just to give myself a break. Um, sometimes it's my phone. Other times it's not eating, eating all the snacks, you know, and not eating six times today because I have nothing better to do. So have I stayed abstinent from that last thing that was that made me not feel great, you know, the day before? Let Tegan say, hold on. Controlling our controllables. Olaf says isn't frozen too. And I kid you not, a 26 year old that, that hit home as I sat in a kid's movie. You know, it's it's totally off topic. We're gonna we're gonna go left with this a little bit for a moment. But Frozen 2 was one of my favorite movies. And uh watching it, watching it, I realized how many 
very valuable life lessons as life lessons were throughout that movie. It's it really blew my mind. We went at 30 years old to watch it, a group of us. Um, and all of us are adults, you know, not one kid was with us. I don't think, oh, wait, there was one kid with us. Um, the rest of us were grown adults and, uh, I loved that movie. There was a lot of, uh, inspiration in there, you know, but yeah, controlling your controllables, the things that you have control over and recognizing them and knowing them. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, the next letter E have I exercised today? It's great for your mind. Mental health, you know, keeps us active and not stagnant and, you know, getting caught up in that. What did my friend, my friend called it today, like getting caught up in the laziness of being unemployed, you know, sleeping in all day and eat it. Like I just mentioned, eating all day and stuff like that, you know, so getting up and just going for a walk or doing some crunches on my living room floor, you know, things like that, that just keep my blood moving and keep my brain um, away from those dark places that I can go sometimes. Oh, how have I done for others today? Or no, sorry. I, what have I done for myself today? You know, that's, self, that's that self-care piece that we're talking about, you know, whether it's going for that walk, uh, meditation, you know, going for a run or playing video games, you know, watching Netflix, playing with my cat, you know, whatever it might look like for you. Um, and that's okay, whatever it is, you know, even if it's a nap or something, you know, a lot of people put these shoulds on, on themselves a lot. Like I should be up doing this. I should be up doing that. But only we know, you know, what, what we're feeling and what we're going through. Um, you know, and, and only we know, like, what made us not comfortable, you know, whether it was yesterday or a few hours ago or something, you know, and we can make that change and do something a little bit different, you know, just to, just to feel a little better about ourselves. Um, and I think that's really important. You know, we talk about recovery all the time. And this is, I'm kind of going left with this too, but it just popped into my head. But like, recovery fitness, you know, when I'm out in the community, and I'm presenting to people or people just tell me, you know, we present at colleges and stuff like that a lot. And, in those areas, people aren't as receptive, you know, because they hear the word recovery and fitness and they're completely shut down. You know, people hear the word recovery and they think it's just alcohol and substances or you hear abstinent and your first thought is I don't do drugs, you know, but that's not what we're talking about here. Recovery is everything, you know, whatever that is that helps you to feel better about yourself or live a different, a different way, you know, um, a lot of people do talk about exercise or food, shopping. You know, I have a huge problem with shopping, you know, and that's my, my recovery is holistic. It's not, yes, I, I do suffer from substance use disorder, but, you know, my recovery isn't just that. That was the tip of the iceberg. You know, for me, it's a lot more about, you know, my self-worth and, you know, my hope and my resilience and, you know, little things that I do that are detrimental to that, which are, you know, emotions and you know, decisions I make when I'm in those emotional states and stuff like that, you know, it's, it really is all encompassing. Um, so next one, uh, what have I done for others today? That was the O. So I find, you know, a lot of my mom, my mom is struggling with smoking cigarettes right now. Like she's quitting or quit and she's trying to maintain that. And she called me the other day and she was, you know, really struggling with just obsessing about smoking a cigarette. And the first, the only thing that I could tell her that has been helpful for me was, you know, pick up the phone and talk to somebody. Don't talk about you and what you're going through. Pick up the phone and ask somebody how they're doing and just listen to them. And I promise you, by the end of that phone call, you're not going to be thinking about a cigarette. You know, and if it happens again, do it again. Pick up the phone again or go help somebody uh, take care of groceries or something. Don't do that today. But, you know, when we're able to do that kind of stuff, um, just get, getting outside of yourself. So sometimes the best form of self-care that I can have is helping someone else. You know, just to get out of this, get out of this madness that goes on up here and just take a break from Kirsten for a while because there's times that it just gets to be too much for me. You know, and I am obsessing, I'm obsessing about the finances or about if the cats can be okay, you know, or my car, um, you know, legal troubles that I've been in, um, groceries, uh, Amazon. I want to shop on Amazon all day. Um, I obsess about food, you know, um, anything that I, I just can't get out of my mind, you know, nine times out of 10. If I pick up the phone and I just help somebody else or I go help somebody else when I'm able to, you know, it gets me out of my head. Um, so that for me is a form of self-care sometimes, you know, not, not always, but sometimes. The you, am I holding on to une unexpressed emotions today? You know, are you bottling up your emotions? Are you holding on to them, sitting in them, ruminating in them? Are you letting them control your every thought and waking moment? You know, um, it's very, 
unhealthy, you know, for me to sit with my feelings. It's easy. It's easy to do that and it's comfortable, but another form of self care and taking care of me and developing hope within myself is talking to others, you know, and getting that feedback that I need and getting support that I need, you know, it helps me remain in that hopeful state instead of digressing into that hopeless state. Um, and the why is yeah. It says yeah with an exclamation point. What is something good that's happened today? So also practicing gratitude and staying mindful of that, you know, the little things. Like I have my computer, I have my TV, I have food in my cupboard, my cat has food. Little things to be grateful for today. You know, I'm alive, I'm breathing, I'm sober. I have an amazing support network. Um, that's self-care too. And that contributes to your hope bank. That's what I like to call it, the hope bank. Um, so the I in, in our acronym, acronym DIG here, get inspired. I'm inspired by this quote from writer and researcher, Elizabeth Cooper Ross. People are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out. But when the darkness sets in, their beauty is re revealed only if there is a, a light from within. I really do believe the light that I saw within the resilient people I interviewed was their spirit. I love the idea of being lit from within. You know, that, that are you, you know, ask yourself, are you lit with, from within today? Or do you get your light and, you know, your sparkle and shine from outside? You know, that was something that I, I struggle with. It is something that I struggle with. And it's something that I've chose to take or to put focus on during this time is like finding that light within myself, you know, not needing it from, not needing it from someone else. Um, you know, and that, again, I can tie that back to hope and, and having hope in myself and believing in myself. You know, and the more that I develop that stuff within me, take care of myself and uh, really, you know, start to believe in myself, the more hope that I have, you know. All right. Um, and the last one, get going. I love daily meditations and prayers. Sometimes the best way for me to get going is quiet prayer. So I'm going to ask, like, just like I did yesterday, how do you dig deep today? You know, I will put this again. I'll put the book information in here. Um, and you can look it up or rewatch the video and write some stuff down. But, you know, ask yourself these questions. Use the acronym A-E-I-O-U and Y. You know, have I been abstinent and have I exercised? You know, ask yourself these questions and see where you're at. You know, and make the changes that you need to do. You need to change to feel better tomorrow. And that's like your own personal experience. I can't tell you what's going to make you feel better tomorrow. You know, we can give you the tools that help us um, and hope, you know, that you you can follow them and you know, try it and see if it works, you know, so dig deep today and, you know, look in, look inside and see, you know, where am I getting inspired from? Where's my inspiration coming from? Where's my hope coming from? Do I have any inside of me, you know, or am I looking outside, you know, just kind of being mindful of where you're at, where your hope is, what do you feel powerless over? You know, what are you inspired by? Yeah. I really like this reading. I was just sitting here thinking about it. And then, you know, I'm going to actually, after I get off this video, ask myself these questions because I have nothing to do for a couple hours. So I'm going to use this a couple hours to get into this and see where I'm at. You know, I, I think I know all the answers most of the time, but, you know, really evaluating it and see where, seeing where I am and where my hope is coming from, you know, and what fills that bank for me, what feels, fills that hope bank and what makes me okay within my own skin. Um, so yeah, please comment and get involved. Uh, let's see, we got one more here. Tegan Kluber Ross came up with the stages of grief. She also says that the stages of grief are not linear and can be repeated and grieving makes for resiliency. I choose to take this time to feel the grief of the time so I can be resilient later. I like that, you know, taking action in the areas that you know you need action on. Sorry, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. So, um, you know, what that looks like for you. Like Tegan's expressing what it looks like for her right now. You know, so really take a look within yourself today and see what that looks like for you. What are some actions that you can take, you know, like writing things out like that, practicing little things, you know, that um, fill your hope bank, you know, with self-care and self-love, you know, reaching out to your supports, watching videos, whatever that looks like for you today. Um, so I do hope that these are helpful and please comment and get involved. We are always available on Messenger. We have our phone number, which is 
484-0234. And all of us would love nothing more than to talk to each and every one of you. So please reach out, give us comments, concerns, ideas, um, things, topics you want talked about. If there's books that you like to read or things that you have found inspirational um, or motivating, you know, self-help and self-care, please provide them to us and we will absolutely do our best to meet you where we can, you know, um, and do what we can. So absolutely. Me and Serenity are leaving now. Hi, see, he's full of vinegar today. So, all right, I'm going to head out and I hope to hear from all of you. Have a good day.